Okay, so maybe you're wondering why the sudden change of heart. Um, what actually happened to um, make me decide that um, I was an heir and needed to change everything that I believed in? So um, after we moved into the new house, um, we moved uh, all the stuff in there. Um, I was you know, had some time to think, of course, by myself because um, the house hadn't sold yet, um, the other house. So, you know, with Michael being um, at the other house and me being here, um, you start to just kind of have time uh, available to think. So I started to think, you know, am, was I an error? Uh, you know, having been brought up in a background where, you know, um, we went to a fundamentalist church uh, until I was 12, and then um, when Dad went back to church and went to the Catholic church um, until, you know, I was a teenager. So there was that, that background, and I thought to myself, well, am I an heir? It, is there a hell? You know, is it real? Is it, have I just convinced myself that there wasn't? Um, so I decided, I said, well, I guess I can ask and find out and see, you know. Um, so I prayed that, you know, if I was an heir to show me my way um, of error and, um, to forgive me for what I had done and that was kind of it and then I was looking at different YouTube videos about how and people's uh, near-death experiences and you know who have been brought back and what they had to say and um, everywhere from the atheists to the people who are Christians and you know just what they had to say and um, I mean I know a lot of stuff out there it could have been biased and so I thought well I really don't want to go off of another person's um, experience maybe that's wrong maybe you know for whatever reason everybody's having the same hallucinations or or what have you so I just kind of prayed that um, if this was real that it would become real to me and that I would know the truth and there wouldn't really be any question in my mind that it was true that there was hell and that there was heaven and that um, I had, you know, picked the wrong path to follow this last um, 12 years or so. And um, so, I'm oh, sorry, <sighs> it's getting late. Um, but I thought I, I wanted to put this out. So, um, probably a few days later, um, I kept praying, I kept praying, kept praying, and I thought, well, you know, I, I want to show that I'm earnest and I'm serious. And I knew that um, with the Bible teaching from before that um, when uh, the prophets and the people who followed God wanted an answer, they would fast. Um, and even though um, I have, you know, a thyroid um, condition, I thought, well, what's one day of fasting going to screw up any more than what's going on? So I thought, well, hey, let's go for it. So I fasted for a day and um, just had water and... Um, and nothing happened for a couple of days, um, and I was still praying, and and uh, I knew that um, it's scripture had said if you seek earnestly for the truth, and you keep knocking, that it will be answered. And so I thought I would just continue to do that and um, show that I was serious, because I thought, well, one of two things are going to happen: nothing or something. So. You might as well just continue trying until, you know, I was done. 
and uh, my glasses are giving me a nice big raccoon eyes here. So, um, probably about three days after the fast, I was laying in bed and um, waiting to fall asleep, and when, okay, <laughs> now it's going to get weird, um, when suddenly uh, Jesus appeared, um, and he said, it kind of, whenever people say that it was all telepathic communication, it's, that's the truth. It's, you don't really talk. You just, you're, you're just knowing what the other person is saying. And he had two angels with him, uh, one on each side of him. And, um, so I was caught, what they call caught up in the spirit and, um, I, I was in it, in the heavenlies, not in heaven itself. And, um, because of my, um, sin, um, I wasn't really allowed in heaven. It was just kind of this feeling that, you know, I had gone so far astray. And even though I had asked for forgiveness, heaven wasn't going to be shown to me. Um, because that's not what I really asked, I guess. My prayer wasn't really f for that. Maybe that was it more. Um, but I wanted to know if hell was real. So um, what Jesus was showing me that, um, yes, I had repented and he was here for me. But he was going to show me what hell was going to be like for me because of the sins if I hadn't confessed them. So... Um, we descended down to hell and um uh the the each angel was on you know either side of me so i had an angel on the left and the right and then jesus was behind me and i couldn't see him but i could feel his presence and um so I, it was as we descended down um there was uh, Satan being restrained. He was mad and very angry. It was like almost infuriating so that he was ready to like lunge, lunge at me, but he was restrained spiritually or um, in the spiritual realm. Um, and so I was taken to an area and it, it was isolation. You're, even though there's all these people there, you're isolated from everybody. So, um, uh, he showed me that, um, my tongue was pulled out and then speared. Um, and it was just, it was terrible. It was like, it's torment. And, um, uh, it was for, um, saying things against God. Um, and then, uh, I was in like a, I, w I would say it would be almost like a coffin, but it was like wooden, like a wooden coffin with no, with no, uh, lid on it and it had, um, uh, cutouts all along the box. And then I was thrown into the box and then there was spears, um, either piercing me or just poking me. So, um, sometimes they would go all the way through my body and sometimes they were just, uh, like, needling me and the demons were running around the box laughing and, um, just torment. And then, uh, into, uh, the private areas because of, um, sins against, sins against God, fornication and, um, uh, it was just, I could, I could, even though I really couldn't, I could see it and I could somewhat feel it in my spirit, I didn't have the feeling, like the full feeling of it. I, there, and as this was happening, of course, I'm like, um, not wanting to be there at all. I'm like, I want to leave, I want to leave, and, and, um, I think that I could have been shown more, um, uh, if I had wanted to stay, but I just totally, I couldn't handle it anymore. I, I said, I, I, 
please take me out of here. I, I just, I can't, I can't deal with it anymore. And, and even though I could feel Jesus behind me, I couldn't see him. And so it wasn't that I was so much afraid. It was just, it was so tormenting and uncomfortable and not wanting to be there. So, um, I came back into, you know, what we know as reality and, um, (laughs) Yeah, that pretty much convinced me that my prayer was answered. So, um, I, I had to abandon the ways that I thought were taking me to spiritual enlightenment and, and, uh, abandon that as my belief in truth and know that um, divinely truth was shown to me and (laughs) I don't want to end up there and I definitely don't want that happening to me and especially not for eternity I mean maybe this happened for 10 minutes I don't know. I mean, I, I, you're not really conscious of the time. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> if I don't want this happening for 10 minutes, I don't want it for t- 10 bajillion years, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, if you want to know if hell is real, you can ask that it be revealed. And if you have a um, desire and that is, and you want God to reveal it to you, I believe he will. If you seek his face, if we fervently seek his face and ask that truth be revealed, he will reveal it to us. And so he revealed, my my question was, is hell real? Yeah. Yeah, hell's real. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> So, uh, there you have it. So, um, after so many times, so much time of chasing the wrong thing, it's, it's time to start chasing the right thing. So there you have it.